Hello everybody, and welcome to The Daily Splat. Today is video number 14 in our series of 20, reviewing the English Premier League season. First of all, my apologies for not being on the last few days and not living up to the daily part of The Daily Splat name. It's been a bit hectic uh, this last week, and indeed the last couple of weeks, but um, here we are, trying to push through and get through reviewing the last English Premier League season before the next one starts, because uh, it's coming up. So, team number 14, alphabetically, Stoke City, and they finished in 14th uh, with 45 points. Now, in the previous season, 2010 to 2011, they finished 13th with 46, so they finished a place lower with a point less. However, I, they're pretty much treading water, you know, you can't say it's a massive decline or, or anything like that. It is the, the slightest of declines, and to be honest... It's pretty much treading water, which for a team like Stoke City, as in with the amount of fans they have, their current financial position and things of that nature, it's pretty impressive. Um, you know, they've only been in the Premier League for the last four years or so, and Tony Pulis has done a magnificent job in making them a stable, hard-to-beat, mid-table Premier League club, which... You know, you can talk to any of the 72 teams in the uh, divisions below the Premier League that are still in the Football League, and they'd love to be that. You know, even the teams that have just come up, West Ham, Reading and Southampton, would definitely settle for that for the next couple of years. So he's done a marvellous job in keeping Stoke where they are. Um, there weren't, In terms of standout moments, there weren't too many in the Premier League for Stoke. Certainly, you know, those big, surprising wins of the past... Uh, didn't really come up, although they did get impressive results at home, managing to hold Manchester United, Manchester City and Chelsea to draws, all at the Britannia. And in that draw with Manchester City came arguably the moment of the season for Stoke, Peter Crouch's magnificent goal that opened the scoring in that match. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it, where he gets the ball outside the box from a goal kick, chests it, and then uh, volleys it over Joe Hart into the back of the net. And for me, that was the goal of the season. I know a lot of people say Papis Dembasise's goal against Chelsea a couple of weeks later for Newcastle was the goal of the season, but I disagree. I prefer Crouch's. I think it's just technically perfect. It's superb stuff from the big man. And of course, this was his first season at Stoke, and I thought Crouch uh, was probably the best of the signings for Stoke. He had a fantastic season, I thought. Well, I mean, for um, for Stoke at least, uh, and for his standards, you know, it's probably probably the best season he's played since um, you know his his first couple of years at Liverpool, which is when I, I think arguably he did play his best football. Um, a couple of the other signings maybe didn't work as well. Wilson Palacios occasionally played all right in midfield, but I, I don't think really brought too much. And uh, Jonathan Woodgate, that experiment is well, that's over now. You know, he was there a year couldn't really get fit, and he's back at Middlesbrough now, but it was worth taking a punt on at least. Um, so, you know, Stoke managing to stay out of any sort of relegation battle, you know, 14th, you know, they're only four places off relegation, but uh, to be perfectly honest, they were never really in any serious danger, finishing, you know, a good 10 points clear off the relegation zone. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they just pretty much carried on carrying on and that's all they can do at the moment really you know obviously they'll look to try and improve on 14th and on the tally of 45 points you know maybe hitting the 50 point barrier might be good for them um outside of the premier league well you know the two domestic cups they wasn't really much going on in either of them the fa cup or the league cup but they were in the europa league which i think is partly the reason why they finished slightly lower in the table than they did the previous season because they had these extra games because they actually made it out of the group. Um, you know, they made it into the knockout stages where they played Valencia, one of Spain's top teams, and uh, that's where they were knocked out. But, you know, that must have been an absolutely fantastic adventure for Stoke, you know, and their fans to be able to play these European games. And I think the fact that they got out of the group stages in the Europa League, you know, for their first time in it, that's a marvellous achievement. And so I think, you know, all considered, um, Stoke continued to play well. Tony Pulis, I think, is a really good manager for that team. I'm not sure how well he'd do at other teams, like if you gave him the, you know, the Manchester United job or the Chelsea job where he had, you know, lots of money, or even at the other end, you know, um, with someone like a West Ham or a QPR. I'm not sure whether he'd suit 
those sorts of clubs. I think he suits Stoke. And, um, you know, I'm sure many Stoke fans will be hoping long may it continue. Um, so, overall, the mark for the season for Stoke, relatively okay in the Europa League, nothing special in the Cubs, a fantastic goal from Peter Crouch, and treading water, a C. Maybe just a C plus, just because that goal came against C. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, C plus, there we go. So, there you go, Stoke carrying on. Uh, okay, that's all for today. Tomorrow's video. Sunderland, very exciting stuff there, uh, change of managers, interesting games, interesting goals, uh, and of course, up and down, lots and stuff to talk about with Sunderland, so make sure you tune in whenever that video goes up, it might be tomorrow, but chances are, it won't be. Okay, until we next speak, bye-bye.